Hello friends, welcome to BISPSolutions.com. My name is Sumit and I'm a VP for Technology Operations and Technical Head for Salesforce, Data Science and Data Visualization in BISP. We in BISP provides you need the niche solutions for your business requirements as we have a team of experts and they are highly professionals and experienced in various domains like finance, marketing, sales, HR, and so on. BISP is committed to provide a solution as per your business requirement based on your business problems. And uh, we, are a, we are committed to complete these solutions or give you a solution in a given time frame and help you to turn your strategic plans to the exceptionals Today, I'm back with a pretty new topic in Python, which is a web framework, and it is known as Fast API, and which helps in faster execution of your process. So we are here to know more about Fast API, what exactly Fast API is, how it is work. So in today's session, in today's video, I'm going to demonstrate you how to implement fast api and how to work on it but before that let's try to find out what exactly fast api let's know more about fast api and what are the key features of fast api then i'll take you to the actual implementation with a small program and then we'll be going to see its output so basically fast api is a modern fast high performance wave framework which is uh, built on Python and which is used for building APIs within Python 3.6 and it is based on a standard Python type and it is one of the modern framework on Python for building REST API. It is fast, easy to use and easy to learn and uh, it can be used to basically it can be queried to obtain the predictions as well. There are certain key features of fast API. They are fast and easy. So it is fast and easy. It has got very high performance on par with Node.js. And it is fast to code as well. Basically, it helps to increase the speed to develop features by about 200% to 300% and many more. Uh, it got fewer bugs. It reduced the 40% of uh, almost uh, almost forty percent of human developers are uh, induced errors. It is easy, as I've already mentioned. It it needed less time to perform an operation. The codes are pretty short, and uh, uh, it provides multiple features from each parameter's declaration. That's why it got fewer bugs. It is robust get production ready code with automated interactive documentation and it provides a standard based implementation so it is based on fully compatible compatible with the open standard for apis and as well as the json schemas so that is about fast api now let's have a look how can we implement fast api how can we test fast api uh, and in order to do that, I have created a sample project in PyCharm. I'm using PyCharm and I prefer to use PyCharm because I can uh, create various modules and files separately and then put them into a simple project instead of using the standard IDLE interface provided by Python. Now here, as you can see, we got, uh, I've created a project name as a dummy project and it's a pip env environment so basically pip env environment help me out to install basically it helps me out to uh, run all the packages or in, run and install all the packages at the same time together so we don't have to in, we don't have to install the packages separately like we used to do uh, in default idle therefore you see so what I have done, I created a new project and I'm using a pip env interpreter. So if pip env interpreter is not installed in your environment, you can uh, pass a command in your command prompt pip install pip env and uh, it will get installed. 
even if you wanted to run this project without using PPNV, that's perfectly fine. But I prefer to use PPNV because as you can see, it provides me a new pip file. And this pip file is a default file generated by this, uh, generated by this project. And here you can see I have mentioned the fast API, all the requests, pandas, and UVCon. So basically, we can provide a list of all the packages required for the current project. And uh, in order to in order to perform the execution, I'll simply go to uh, terminal, and in terminal, I just write pip env lock. And when I pass pip env lock. If any new package is added, it will look for all the dependencies. It will download all the packages and uh, basically it will download all the require the reference, uh, the, the packages which we have added here. So it will download the download all the packages and we and ready for installation. So any changes will be made if you want to add a new package instead of doing it manually just do it here just add a reference here so that next time whenever we execute this file if any new updates are there it will just download the updates for all the packages which are mentioned here so you can see the pip file is updated and finally i can write pip env sync and when we pass pip env sync it will install the dependencies from the pip file log so pip env sync is usually look for pip env lock sorry pip file lock you can see so it's installing and once installation is completed we are good to start our libraries and packages will be available and you can see it's uh, it's about to we are ready to use it uh, it's yeah so all dependencies are now up to date and now we are ready to use it so now what i'm going to do now here is first of all i'm going to create a python file and i give this name as test1.py the packages or libraries which are needed for to test fast api first is i'll just write and that package is import uh, first of all we would be needed fast api so i just write uh, from fast api import from fast api import fast api and one more uh, package we require that is used for uh, that is used to execute the process or to run the process that is import uv con import uv con that's why you see i have already added a reference for uv con as well so basically uv con is used it's an asgi server which is used for production and execution so without uvcon this pro, uh, this uh, our program or our fast api program won't execute and the very first line i'm going to do is that is app is equal to fast api and uh, because we are going to build a web framework so in web framework it is free to provide the uh, reference of your libraries and now I'm going to create two functions here to get functions, basic two functions, basically, or you can say two methods I'm going to define. One is the get method, another one is the post method. So I just write app dot get and uh, uh, I just add a forward slash forward slash means what lab means what library, uh, what you this will be the URL when we execute our project. So I'll just write forward slash and in order to uh, okay, I'll just keep it since uh, I'll keep it as it is and I'm creating a function here and I just call test underscore root. That's the default function I'm creating and uh, let me move this out. That's a function and here in this function, I just return uh, return and it's in the form of a key and value pair. So I just write hello. It's a simple word. I just write hello word. Now, in order to test this program or in order to test this project, I'll simply say run test one, stop and rerun. And as you can see, the process has been executed and the process is finished completely. Now, the issue here is how we are going to test it out because uh, in order to access this, we need to pass the URL. But where is the URL? Where is the base URL? Therefore, to run this program, I'll go to terminal here and here I will pass. 
uv corn you need to pass the command uv corn your project name or your file name uv corn test one colon app hyphen hyphen reload and when i execute this you see a url is ready so we can access this we can access our fast api interface on this url and i when i click on this url a new browser is open for me and you can see i can see hello world and why i can see hello world right now why it is not needed any additional url because that's a default one that's why now uh, if i want let's suppose i just write here uh let's say function or read underscore data if i rerun it right now so let me stop it and rerun i just rerun once again and definitely we have to go to terminal i'll just finish it run again and i just refresh it as you can see i'm not able to find any detail it's not sharing any details to me therefore i need to pass the function name is uh, the complete URL is read underscore data. And when I pass read underscore data, I am able to fetch it. So that's the way we can specifically define the different get functions with separate URL. So that's a pretty good uh, implementation, pretty fast. Whereas if we have to do the same thing in other wave frameworks, we have to first check it out and uh, it needs some time to process to execute and see the process is pretty faster and I can quickly see read data in same manner if I wanted to uh, create a post function so I'll just do one thing I just write at the rate f dot post and for f dot post I would be needing a function call insert data so that's my URL and def insert underscore rec and here I'm passing one parameter just for testing purpose and str. That's a function. And I simply return whatever values we pass, I'll just return it. I just write name is name. So it's a pretty cool thing. I just write in a very small, uh, in a very uh, short statements and we are able to fetch it out. Now if I execute it once again, so let me run it and it again, we, we cannot run it directly from here. We have to go to terminal, stop the previous process, and let me run it once again. Now, in order to fit, in order to get this, I would be calling a URL, and my URL is this. Let me switch to this URL, and here I would be passing insert data. So I just copy this insert data and pass insert data. And you say it says method not allowed because it's waiting for one. Uh, it's waiting for one value. So it would be waiting for a value to be passed. Now, sometimes when we have such kind of things, we wanted to test it out. And in order to test it, uh, in order to test it, Yeah, so in order to test it, what I can do is I can simply insert, I'll just remove this one and I just write docs. So basically fast API provides a docs interface where we can quickly validate the process where, whether all the get or get or post methods we have defined, they will work perfectly fine or not. So as you can see, we have created two methods here. One is a get method. Another one is a post method in get. We are simply displaying a value called hello world and for post we need to first pass a value and then it will respond back with the same value we entered now and in order to test it out i click on get and as you can see it's not showing any output right now so when i click on try it out and click on execute i can see its response so basically our server is responding with the so whenever uh, we hit this url the base url including this read data it will respond back with hello world and which is doing uh, exactly what it is doing here so this is my complete url requested url definitely we can replace this local host url with our server url where we are going to deploy this where actually we are going to deploy this now if i want to test the post one i click on post and uh, again it's waiting for a name so i need to click on try it out i just put a name i just put my name 
and click on execute so right now you see uh, there is no output when i click on execute i got an output here the url is this uh, insert name question mark name is called to submit and when whenever we hit this url it will respond with this name submit so we can test it out as a separate also when i hit it uh, insert underscore data okay so we can will will get a response with this name colon submit and uh, uh, successful response any validations if it is coming validation error any error occurs this will throw error message here so that's the way we we can have multiple functions we can add multiple methods or we can add multiple functions with which is will be associated with functions so all the functions will be listed and we can test those functions from here only before deploying it act, uh, before deploying it or before moving it to the uh, final deployment so we can test this in this production only because usually what happened uh, whenever we execute whenever we run uh, whenever we uh, perform any execution in other web frameworks and in order to test it we have to run the complete process but here we provide uh, the fast api provided us a testing interface using docs where we can test all our functions are executing perfectly fine or not and if they are not working perfectly or as per our requirement we can fix it out and once it is completed finally we can move it on to the production or and move, we can move it to the deployment now one more thing uh, as i've told you that in order to execute this every time we have to uh, every time we have to pass a statement in terminal that is uvcon test one colon apps hyphen reloaded now instead of that what i can do uh, i can just add one function call underscore underscore name equal equal underscore underscore main underscore underscore and here i'm just writing uvcon dot run and i just pass a statement call app and now when i click on run test one it will automatically run this process so we don't have to pass uvcon dot run a statement in basically we don't have to pass that statement in terminal by ourselves it will run automatically basically it's good to start and we can click on the url and hit the link this is the link and finally we can test it out using so that's the way we can perform the operations in fast api uh, that's what fast api is i believe the uh, i believe uh, you are clear with fast api now uh, we would be coming up with some new videos in fast api and then if you have some queries or if you have some business requirements or if you have some questions you can drop an email to us or you can get back to us on www.bispsolutions.com we would be happy to help you with this thanks for watching have a nice day goodbye